Howdy guys, Cub here. Welcome back to Hermitcraft. Last time we worked on some memento rooms in our base, right down here on the far side. Put Brian Fantana in one of them, and also made another one for the Revolution headquarters. Uh, so yeah, got some of this stuff going on here. There's Brian right there. Perfect. And yeah, let's go ahead and I think the first thing we want to do, we want to remove... Some of you guys suggested we remove the moon, all but one of the moons, from these banners. And I think that was a pretty good idea. So we're going to try and do that. First thing we got to do is secure Brian Fantana. <laughs> so let's see if we can quickly get him. Oh, he, he, yep, he's he's a fast one. He's a fast one. You got to be quick about this. There we go. Okay, we got to get him over here again. And then that might hold him. Hang on. That should hold him back, I think. I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't think he can get over this. Let's see. We're about to find out. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine right there. Okay, so we'll leave that banner right there as the one with the moon. And we're going to go ahead and take the moon off of all the rest of these here. We'll just stop, hop on in here and get this. This is also how I put down the pressure plates and stuff in this room uh, last episode. And, and the heads, the mob heads, stuff like that. So that should work. Brian should be okay right there, I hope. We'll soon know if he <laughs> if he escapes. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take the moon off of all these to start off the episode and then put all these back. So guys, there we go. We got the gravestones now, devoid of all the moons. So we just have one with the moon right there, uh, which we're going to keep up. And yeah, I think with that, this room is now pretty much done. We may give Brian a sword or something uh, in the near future, but that'll have to wait. Today, though, we're going to start off by doing a Ask Jarvis question. So let me just fly on through my base here. There we go. Over to Jarvis right here. Very cool. Man, I really love these these effects that this makes around here. Like he's sort of pulling stuff in. That's awesome. Uh, anyway, today's Ask Jarvis question comes from Mr. Observer. And he asks, is the 8-Ball your brother? So is the 8-Ball Jarvis's brother? Jarvis does give responses very similar to an 8-ball. And so it makes sense that he could be related, so we'll see. We'll see. Could be like the, the advanced version of the 8-ball. Yes, yes, a million times yes! There you go, guys! Confirmed, Jarvis's brother is an 8-ball. Right there. Um, so, yeah, that's actually another one of the repeated ones we've gotten. Um, by the way, I've had some people <laughs> suggesting that I somehow rig... Jarvis's answers, uh, that is not the case, actually. We, uh, we have a very elaborate AI mechanism back here, which gives a whole bunch of different answers, which some of which you can see right back here. So, yeah, you can see some of these have been selected a few times. Uh, some of these, yeah, I'll just go over some of them. So, right there, you can see a few of them. Here's some of them right here. <laughs> um, here's some of them right here. So, yeah, you can, uh, you can sort of make out how this thing works, uh, if you go back and watch some of the previous videos, but, yeah. It's all about how you interpret the answer. Uh, if you interpret the answer in certain ways, more than half the time it'll make sense. Um, so, yeah. That is the Jarvis AI. And, let's see. Today, guys, today, I think we want to start to work on the surface of the Mushroom Island. I'm thinking, <clears throat> I'm thinking we go ahead and tear down this tree will be the first thing we do. Uh, we want to tear this down, tear down at least the canopy for sure, and probably also the trunk and the, the roots here. So that will be a somewhat large task in and of itself. And then I also want to start to put down some foliage around here. So I'm thinking maybe we put down a bunch of bone meal, like we just go through and bone meal a huge portion of the island. That could be cool, and I also want to start to build some of like the flowers and stuff. So we might build like a flower in place of some of these mushrooms. Uh, we might build like a like a big fern or something in place of some of these. Um, but basically, I want to start to get a feel for what the enchanted forest is going to be like, uh, because I think that would be yeah something we need to do in the very near future. So let me grab my shear shulker box. Actually, I already have some shears here. But there should be... Do I have... I thought I had one with shears in it. If not, we got iron, I think. Yeah, we got iron, so we're fine. So let's go ahead and get on up to the top of this tree. 
And we are just going to go ahead and take down the entire top portion here. So let me go ahead and get started on this and I'll be back. So guys, it's been a very long time since I talked about anything space related and I decided while I'm tearing down this tree, I'm going to talk to you guys about some space stuff. Namely, the upcoming launch of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket on February 6th. Uh, I haven't really talked about SpaceX that much, uh, mainly because their launch and landings of Falcon 9 rockets have become so routine, as evidenced by this landing you're seeing right here. I think they've now landed something close to 15 Falcon 9s, launched and landed 15 consecutive Falcon 9s successfully. So, that is very, very good news. And on February 6th, they're going to be test launching the most powerful rocket uh, in existence today. The Falcon Heavy rocket. Here's an animation that is what you're seeing uh, right here. So uh, this is just a, an animation right here, but um, yeah, basically what they're going to do is they're going to launch this giant rocket uh, from Cape Canaveral. It's going to have a Tesla Roadster attached to it. Here's some photos showing that. So that is literally a car being put into a rocket. And then they're going to launch this Tesla Roadster into space. And the Roadster itself should orbit the sun for the next several billion years. So there's literally, if this launch is successful, going to be a car orbiting the sun for as long as the sun exists, essentially. And back to the animation here real quick. Uh, you can see here there are two uh, separate cores. By the way, these cores themselves, uh, these rockets are basically as tall as nine-story buildings. So that puts it into perspective how big they are. And right here they're doing their boost back. And now they are sort of reorienting themselves, uh, re-entering the atmosphere. And so people at Cape Canaveral will actually hear two almost simultaneous sonic booms back to back as these things slow down coming through the atmosphere. And then they should see hopefully uh, two side cores, both of which by the way these have already flown to space and back. Uh, these are reused cores that they're going to be using uh, on the sides of Falcon Heavy. And then they'll have two simultaneous touchdowns on the pad, which will be awesome. Uh, then the payload, that's going to be the uh, the Roadster right there, firing off into deep space. And then the other core will also fly back and then land at Cape Canaveral, which is amazing if it, if it all works properly. So now I'm going to shut up and show you guys an actual static fire that happened earlier this week of the Falcon Heavy launch vehicle. So this is actual footage, this is real life footage, not an animation of Falcon Heavy on the launch pad. Wow, that was some power. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that was the static fire, uh, which basically means that they hold on to the rocket so it doesn't leave the pad. Obviously, at the launch, they're going to let it go and hope for the best. Uh, again, it is a test launch, so, yeah, it may explode. It may not explode. We'll have to see. But either way, you either get to see a really big explosion or you get to see a car go to space and for the first time ever in human history, uh, multiple orbital class rocket, rocket cores land simultaneously after lift after lifting off, shortly after lifting off. So either way, it's going to be insane and awesome. So guys, that is it for space news for today, but there will be a lot more of these segments in the near future because basically there is some amazing stuff happening in space and space related fields right now that... I want to share and want to talk to you guys about and so we'll be doing this a lot more in the future um both on re with regards to like spacex and space transportation with uh, sls and blue origin and stuff that's coming in the near future i uh, would also talking about space missions like jwst which should launch very soon and other space related missions which are finding out some incredible stuff about the universe we live in so i'm very excited to share with that with you guys in the near future but for right now let's go ahead and get back to minecraft
there we have it. Tree is now taken down, guys. And now that the tree is down, I want to sort of show you what I'm kind of more or less aiming for with this Enchanted Forest project. So here's an image by a guy called Mark815. Uh, this image really inspired me to make the Enchanted Forest, uh, to be totally honest with you. Um, so I want to make something that looks sort of like this. So you have these big, tall, towering trees, and then a relatively uh, dense canopy that the trees form above you. And here's another image from a different angle. And so like that pathway there, you can think of that as like our pathway right here. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what I'm aiming for, although I do want a little bit more stuff at the bottom of the trees. Uh, so like, you know, more grass and more flowers and more uh, giant flowers and giant stuff as well. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of what we're aiming for with this project, just to give you guys sort of an idea of what uh, we are shooting for with this thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to grab, I think this is all of our leaves and all of our all of our wood here. Let's grab that. I think I got most of the leaves and stuff recovered, so that's good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make our way down here. And I think today what we should do, we should try and put down some bone meal on our island. Just because right now it's literally just grass. Because uh, again, we, we terraformed the entire island. Uh, it was all mycelium, obviously, because we are in Mushroom Island, as you can see right there. That's why there's all these mushrooms around here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. We need to put some grass down because I think that will, just that alone, I think will help quite significantly. Um, and somebody tweeted at me the other day uh, that they're sort of following along with me in this Enchanted Forest project. And they've, they've uh, put down some grass and it looked great. So I'm going to try and do that today. Let's go ahead and just put away, let's put these things away here. Uh, splash of color, dark oak, and dark oak logs. And then an empty one right there. Okay, so let's get ourselves out some bone meal. We probably will not have enough bone meal right now, honestly. But there we go, we got a little bit. We might also, let's just check in here. See if we have any bone meal. Nether quartz, white terracotta. Oh, here we go, bone, boom, yes. And let's also keep it here. There we go, bop, 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 bop. There we go, undo that, send it back, perfect. And let's just go ahead and quickly make ourselves a whole ton of bone meal. And what we're going to try and do, guys, we're going to try and go through and bone meal the entire island. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be quite a task. So we'll just, you know, run around the entire thing and just put down bone meal everywhere. Like, absolutely everywhere. We'll also, we'll also make, you know, tall grass and things as well. But I think this will add... Yeah, it's already looking better. Look at that. <laughs> Just that little bit of, of bone meal right there has already added a lot of character to this area. We'll also put in, you know, tall grass like this. Most of this... Well, not most of this, but some of this will not stay. This is actually coming in quite thick here, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, most of... Uh, like, some of this will not stay. We'll have to destroy it and put down trees or giant flowers or whatnot, but... I do want to go ahead and get this done here because this is going to take a lot of bone meal and a lot of time to do. So let's just go ahead and run around. We're going to bone meal our entire island right here. All right, guys, we got about a third of the island done. Let me show you the before map of the island right here. And here is the map as it currently stands. So, yeah, you can see massive changes to all the grass around here. And it not only looks good on this map, at least in my opinion, I think it looks good on this map. But if we go to the outside, take a look at this, guys. This, this is incredible. Like, just adding grass does so much for the island. Let me, let me show you here. Look at this! Look at how well it, like, frames in the path. Absolutely beautiful. And so, yeah, I've, I've added, you know, a bunch of grass. There's obviously flowers that come along with that. Uh, we will add different varieties, and it's not all going to be just the yellow and the uh, the poppy. But, yeah, this is looking awesome. We put in a lot of uh, tall grass, too. So, two tall grass. 
Um, but yeah, just adding this adds so much depth and so much character to the area. It's just, wow. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this dramatic, but this looks really, really cool, actually. Yeah, I am, I am absolutely loving this, guys. I hope you guys are, <laughs> hoping, hopefully it's coming through on YouTube, but this is a huge improvement. I've also added on the back side here of, like, the, uh... The, uh, the tree farm. I think I'm probably going to keep this a little bit clear here. Like, not put the grass here, but I put some along this side right here. Along this back. This back hill is looking nice now. Man. Really, really good. Really helps out the whole area a lot. So, I think we go ahead and get more bones, guys. I think we... Let's go ahead and go on down. We'll get some more bones. I think we may have enough to cover all the island. Uh, let's see here. We're going to need to go right here. Bones. And we're just going to pull out the rest of these in here. This should be quite a few. This should be probably enough to cover the rest of the island. But if not, we may have more in there. So let's go ahead and send that back now. There we go. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and keep going here, guys. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the rest of the island done. I want to get rid of this, and I want to get rid of that. Get the bone meal in there. There we go. So, like I said, we have about two-thirds of the island, this whole half over here, uh, this bit up here, and then some little spots down here and this island as well. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get it done. Uh, I also might want to get the very tip up here as well. So, let's go ahead and get it done, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we're about two-thirds of the way done here. I'm just going through here and putting down even more grass. Uh, these hills are kind of difficult to get because... Of the way grass grows it looks like it can only grow um, a certain number of blocks like up and down from where you place it so the hills can sometimes be problematic and easy to miss but uh, I'm trying to get them as best as I can here there we go perfect like that and then like this and so like I said we're about two-thirds of the way done and I gotta say once again a big thank you uh, the guy who inspired me to do this to just get on with it and do it uh, on Twitter was Austin Wilson so thank you Austin for that uh, you can see, yeah, there's still some big areas over here we haven't done. And just just look at this. So just compare this area, right? I mean, it looks okay. The grass is uh, the uh, the grass block rather is pretty green, but just compare that to if I fly over this way. Compare that to this right here. I mean, there's just like no comparison. It's just it's a hundred times better easily with the grass compared to no grass. So yeah, just. Again, thank you for the inspiration and uh, convincing me to just get on with it and just do it. <laughs> because, yeah, sometimes you just need to be inspired by somebody else to uh, get a good idea. And this is the case right here for me. So thanks once again, and let's finish up this bone mealing process. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we have it. We got the entire island covered with grass, as you can see, even all the way out here by the sheep farm. So all this is now covered with grass, and yeah, all the way back to the other side is now also covered with grass, so that's fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll make our way over to the base. We'll take a look at the map, and that should be all updated and show all the grass, I'm pretty certain. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, this is what the island is looking like now. Quite a big change from what it was at the start of the episode with all this new grass and all these new uh, flower blocks and things. There's still some areas, like this area right here, I need to fill in a little bit. I actually ran out of bone meal. Um, so we used an entire uh, shulker box full of bones, plus some extra, like all my all my dyes from here. I have no white dyes anymore. So <laughs> yeah, we are totally out of bone meal 100%. And there's also some other areas, like up here, I think. Yeah, right there. There's a little strip right there that needs to be Hit with some bone meal a little bit, but for the most part, I think we did pretty good in, yeah, getting everything pretty much covered evenly for the most part. Since we now have the whole island covered in grass, I think it's now a good time to go ahead and start to add some of the other things I was planning to add for this enchanted forest, namely the giant flowers. So the giant flowers are going to be sort of on the same scale as these giant mushrooms here. So, you know, between like, let's say six and... 12 to 14 blocks tall depending on you know some of these taller mushrooms can get pretty pretty tall 
And I think the first flower we're going to make is going to be right back here. Um, because I said before I wanted to have the mushrooms replaced with uh, flowers. But I think we'll keep some of the mushrooms now at least. Um, for now. We might replace some of them uh, with flowers in the future. But for now we want to keep them. And I think we'll put like the first flower for instance right back here. So let's go down into the base. We're going to need some materials for this. We're going to need like some gray, not some gray, some green. So like green concrete, uh, not there, right here. Uh, so green concrete, green concrete powder would be nice. That would be awesome. We'll also get out some terracotta. Uh, do we have any regular terracotta? There's some regular terracotta. There's some green terracotta. Lime terracotta as well. And then we also want to get out sort of a model. I'm thinking we go with like the tulip as sort of a, a base model. I especially like this top bit of the tulip where it sort of, you know, comes out a little bit on the sides. Uh, I don't think we'll make the leaves of the tulip. I think we'll just make like basically the stem with the, uh, the end bit here with the, the bud on the end there. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to go with, let's say light blue, light blue concrete, and then regular blue. So we'll do like a blue tulip, I think would be cool. And then we might also do like a purple one. So we'll get purple, purple concrete, magenta, magenta concrete. And we also need some stained glass of those same colors. So I'll go ahead and grab some of this stuff, get to work, and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, guys, so we have ourselves our first giant flower. This is what it's looking like right here. It's supposed to be like a giant... Uh, light blue tulip right here. So we used the light blue concrete, the light blue wool, the light blue stained glass panes, and some light blue concrete powder on the inside uh, to make this thing happen. And it has sort of that, that tulip shape, that curved shape on the top with the, uh, the thin stem. So you can see here it sort of resembles this one right here. This is a tulip, a pink tulip. And it sort of has that, you know, that bowl shape in the middle there. And then for the stem, we just went with some green blocks. We went with some uh, green wool, some green terracotta, some green glass panes, and there's also some green glass blocks. Yeah, right here. Green stained glass blocks in there. So, yeah, not too shabby, I don't think. Uh, if we get farther away, you'll see what it looks like as we fly around. So if we fly around here, let's just get on out here. Uh, well, we can't really see it from this angle. There we go. Uh, well, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can see what it looks like when we fly over it. There's also like a little bit of an interior bit to it as well. Uh, which if I fly on in like this, yeah. You can see that right there. So, yeah, just put this in here. This is sort of like the, I think it's called the stamen of the flower. Uh, so I put that in there and it sort of glows at night. Like the top of it glows at night. So that's also kind of cool. So, yeah, let me know what you think about this type of flower design right there, guys. Is it good? Is it bad? Do we want to maybe try some other variants as well? Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think about that. So, yeah, guys, I think that we'll have other giant flowers around the area similar in scale to this one here with different colors uh, underneath of the trees. And those should go well with the mushrooms down here. So we'll have giant mushrooms, giant flowers, and then giant trees as well for this enchanted forest. And then, of course, we already have the grass down as well. Uh, plus other smaller flowers, not just all dandelions and poppies. So we'll have to gather some flowers in some flower forest biomes as well. But anyways, guys, I think that will be it for me today. Once again, please leave your feedback on this flower. And yeah, I will consider it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.